Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning and welcome. Welcome one and all. Can, is my mic on? Testing, one, two, three, four. All right. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning and welcome. I'd like to welcome you who are visiting with us and guests for the baptism. We're glad that you're all here and it's excited to see you again. Welcome. For others that are visiting, we're glad that you're our guests also and have joined in for this worship service. We were to schedule to have two worship services. However, um, uh, Nora has developed a fever and so we will not be having uh, Eloise's baptism today. A couple of announcements for the good of the body gathered here. Um, next week, we are scheduled to dedicate the railing, and Corey Rank, who did the work for us, will um, be here on hand so we can thank him and dedicate it for, for uh, helping people get to uh, important places in the Alder area. Also, we want to say, too, an update on Sharon. Her knee uh, has been replaced for a couple weeks now. The first week was a painful one, but this one's a lot better, and she thinks she's about a week ahead from the other knee replacement she had a few months ago, so we're thankful for that. Also want to ask you to turn for a minute to the um, bulletin where the congregational ascent is in the baptism, the baptism part. Um, we're going to have to make a couple changes there. So um, if you get a pencil in front of you, just want to make a couple quick changes because this was for with two people and now we're just going to have one. So where it says uh, on page four, the congregation shall say, if you can get a pencil out from the front there, it, was, it should say for now, uh, on behalf of the Church of Jesus Christ, we receive Albert as a new person in Christ. We offer our understanding and support as he explores life. We enfold Albert in love. And then down in the last sentence, we join with these parents in telling the gospel in our midst so that Albert may live with us for Christ, showing forth his love in the world. So those are the changes um, for later in the baptismal part of the service. Hmm? Page two. Three. Oh, it's page four on mine, so it's page three on you. It's three on yours. Okay. On page three. Any questions? At this time then, I would like to invite um, Kathy to come forward for an announcement. I'd like to share with you this morning. Being a charter member of Family Promise for 16 years, Bowsman has hosted homeless families 48 times. With, with three families for most of the week, that's 144 families. And with the average of four members per family, some less, some, some more, that is 576 homeless individuals, either moms, dads, or mostly kids, 576. So whether you donated money to, the, to pay for groceries, or whether you prepared a meal, or slept over in church like we used to do, you have touched the lives of 576 people striving for independence. Our next home week starts tomorrow, and today is the last day to donate and I will deliver the, the cards tomorrow. So there's a basket up here if you still would like to, to donate for Family Promise. The donation basket is there on the bell tables or you can see me after service. Thank you so much for your generous support through the years making a positive impact on homeless moms and dads as they seek a better life for themselves 
and their children. Thank you so much. Good morning. I'm Carolyn Lee. Um, I just to remind you that the sauerkraut dinner is scheduled for the, the 5th of March. Uh, we will be preparing it on the on the fourth Friday, and can use all a number of helpers. So. If you're interested, please let me know. I didn't put a sign up this morning, but I will have one up next week. <laughs> um, there are order forms. I thought they were in the back, but I don't see them. So uh, right after church, I will run out and get some. And uh, the other thing is you, you can call the church and um, talk to Nancy, and she'll take the order. I understand that the, that, that the announcement did not have the ability to, for you to place the order online, and I will try to correct that first thing tomorrow morning. Uh, the other reminder is that we still have soup uh, for sale. Uh, it's down in the freezer, and all of the varieties are available, so uh, you can either go downstairs if you can't go down. Well, we'll be glad to bring some up. So. We'll be on hand. Yes, Bonnie. Um, the order form I saw on Shadow and Bradley were out in the North. In the North? Okay. There, she said there's, there are order forms out here. So uh, don't forget to pick them up. Take an order for your neighbor, your family, your friends, and uh, we hope to have a big turnout. Thank you very much. Any other announcements? Is it on now? Yeah. yeah. Amen. <laughs> On that note, let us all rise and share the peace and love of Christ with one another. Be with you, Marge. Peace be with you. Ellie was here and wanted you to say hello to her. Anyway, she did. She did make church.
Come, let us worship the Lord and learn the ways of life. We God. Love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. We Bless those who curse you and pray for those who persecute you. We come to worship God. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. We have come to follow Jesus. Come, let us worship the Lord and learn the ways of life.
powerful take and take and lie and lie and oppress and oppress, seemingly without consequence. Forgive our failures to follow in the way of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Teach us to love with skill, to love with precision. Teach us to love with abandon, trusting that when we step into the ocean of your abundant love, we will receive the blessings of your abundant life. Amen. Amen. God comes to us in the judgment and love of Jesus Christ. Believe the good news of the gospel that although we fall short, we are loved and claimed and forgiven by God. Amen and amen. You may be seated. And now let the young Christians come forward. championships for our league with this team. And it was really a nice time. Have any of you have a uniform or play on a team of any kind? What do you what do you wear? Basketball jersey. Nice. What other jerseys? Soccer. Soccer jersey. Anybody else have a jersey or a shirt? Or you a little do you play any? Soccer jersey. Nice, nice. Well, uh, maybe um, down the road you will play on a team and they'll give you a jersey. Or if you, when you play, in a, you play an instrument and you play in an orchestra or something, you often have uniforms for that too, don't you? Yeah, so maybe that'll be your uniform. And it's all good. The reason I bring this up is it reminds me that I was on a team, and when you wear your different jerseys, you're on a team, right? And you try to work together and uh, help one another um, to play the game, right? Yeah. And in a similar way with our baptism today with Alfred, who will be coming up in a few minutes, your brother, um, we are going to uh, baptize him. And he doesn't know it yet, but he's on a team. He's on God's team. You know who else is on God's team? You? I'm on God's team, yeah. And who else up here is on God's team? You all too. You all are on God's team. How many of you were baptized? Do you know if you were baptized? Like Al Alfred's going to get done? Yeah. I think you were baptized. I think all of you were baptized, right? Um, and so you were on God's team too. Yeah. Now, we don't get uniforms to be on God's team. We're able to wear the stuff that we're wearing now. But we're all on God's team. And um, Alfred's on God's team too. Does Alfred know he's on God's team? Why doesn't Alfred know he's on God's team? Yeah. Because he's a baby, yeah. Does he understand English? Maybe he understands German. No? He doesn't understand any language yet, does he? Who has to teach him that? Well, God, but God uses people to teach him that, right? And just like God uses people to teach him um, how to speak, God uses people like you and me to let him know he's on God's team too, just like we are. And he matters just as much as we do. Well, we're going to have the baptism in a minute. And um, I need a couple of volunteers um, to hand out some 
things here. Would somebody like to help? Um, if, if, you, if you're allowed to stay up here, um, if you'll stay kind of over here, up on the steps, if you're allowed to stay up here, that would be great. Who would like to hand this out? Well, I saw your hand. You're going to help with the water, Stella. You're going to help with the water. Who would like to hand out this bid? Well, I think we'll, we'll go with a card for you, because I saw your hand first. Here's a certificate of baptism. And there's another bigger certificate of baptism. Who would like to hand that? No, you're going to help out with the water. Would someone else like to help out with this sort of bid? I need a volunteer. We want to be the only one Okay. No problem. Could you hand those out too? All right. So if you'd like to stay up here, you're welcome to. If you'd like to go back to your seats, you may do that as well. It's up to you. At this time, I'd like to invite the family to come forward. You'll just have a seat right over there. That'd be great. And you two kind of stand up and come over here with mom and dad. Um, over there with mom and dad. Yeah, right in here is good. Members and friends of Christ, we gather now to celebrate the gift of grace in the sacrament of baptism. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and creator of us all. Jesus said, unless we are born anew, we cannot see the reign of God. Unless we are born of water and the spirit, we cannot enter God's new order. Paul the Apostle said that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into Christ's death. We are also buried, therefore, with Christ by baptism into death, so that we might be raised from the dead to the glory of God, that we too might walk in newness of life. The sacrament of baptism is an outward and visible sign of the grace of God. For as much as the promise of the gospel is not only to us, but also to our children, Baptism with water and the Holy Spirit is the mark of their acceptance into the church, their sign and seal of their participation in God's grace and forgiveness, and the beginning of their growth into full Christian faith and fellowship. And now to the congregation gathered here, do you, Jesus Christ calls us to make disciples of all nations and to offer them the gift of grace in baptism. Do you who witness and celebrate this sacrament Promise your love, support, and care to Albert as he grows and lives in Christ and to their parents as they raise him in the faith. If so, you may answer the promise in the bulletin. baptizing Albert. Let us rise as we are able and confess our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. Let us say what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Now, Max and Carrie, is it your sincere desire that Albert be baptized into the Christian faith? If so, you may answer, it is. It is. 
and you promise by God's help and your life and teaching to lead Albert towards an understanding of this faith and into the service of Jesus Christ? If so, you may answer, we do with the help of God. We do with the help of God. And also, do you promise to enroll Albert in the confirmation class when his time comes so that he too might consider the promises and beliefs we have set over him on this day and hopefully affirm them for himself? If so, you may answer, we do with the help of God. We do with the help of God. Amen. At this time, I would like to invite, with your help, uh, help them to pour water into the baptismal font. Let us pray. O Lord, giver of life and power, you have promised not only to us to be our God, but also the God and Father of all children. Sanctify with your spirit, Albert, whom we baptize according to your word. Bless this water that it may be the sign and seal of new life in Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Now name this child. Albert, Albert Bray Spade. Spade. Albert Bray Spade. Albert Bray Spade. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is my honor and privilege to present to you Albert Spade. May you bless him and keep him, Lord. May you help him find his gifts and talents. May you help him know he's a true child of yours and of the Spade family, and he has things to shopper in this world. Amen.
if you'll come and give that. That's a reminder that um, you have a life that's unfolding in your life. You've got three now that are unfolding in your life. And what a wonderful job you're doing. We also have from Sue Winting a bib that was made. And we have two certificates of baptism. Uh, one that you can hang in your room if you wish, and one, one for the drawer. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, God bless you. At this time, I invite you to join me in our prayer for illumination. Let us pray. Living God, help us so to hear your holy word that we may truly understand that understanding may be believed and believing may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do. Through Christ our Lord. takes away your coat. Do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. And he blessed this word from our reading. First of all, I want to thank Sandy for coming and filling in today. Um, it's great to have you with us, filling in for Sharon. Welcome. When I was um, 18, my father said, I want to take you into town and go to a bar. And uh, he wanted to buy me my first legal drink. And it meant a lot to him because my, his father did the same thing with him. And I didn't think too much of it at the time, but it meant a lot to him that he was this family tradition. And when Matthew became 18, I took him to get his first legal drink. And it, I think it meant probably more to me than it meant to him. And my hope and prayer is that when Nora becomes of drinking age, that he takes her there for a drink. And then when Eloise, who could not be here today to be baptized, becomes of age, that he takes her for a drink. And when Jimmy reaches his age, uh, he takes Jimmy for a drink. And when Tyler becomes of age, he brings Tyler 
And when Sandy becomes of age, he brings her. Um, I kind of like being a grandparent. So the more, the more, the better. How about it? How about it, grandparents? It's wonderful. Um, it's a family tradition that not every family has, but it's one that I hope will continue. Um, you have families, and you have family traditions, do you not? And also in families, have you not noticed that there are also certain physiological features that some families have? Have you decided who Albert looks after, and who is it? Right now, Beatrice. Right now, okay, there you go. These looks spades. looks they like, all like spades. <laughs> they look like spades. All right, all right. Uh, and you know, you see that in your families and other families too. They have to be related, you say, right? And then also, have you noticed that some families are, tend to be loud and outgoing, and other families tend to be more quiet and reserved? Have you noticed also that some families tend to follow the rules more than other families? Some families don't follow the rules very well. And so these, these, these things that are connected to families, they help define families and shape families. And I'm wondering, could it be the same for the family of God? Could it be the same for the family of God? Family traditions, we're doing a family tradition right now, are we not, with this worship service? We did an ancient family tradition with our baptism, did we not? We do family traditions here. Are there not certain hopes and expectations that come with being a family member? That we're to follow certain insights and understandings in the, in the life and death and resurrection of Jesus and his example and his teachings that this is to define and shape our lives as a community of faith. As a community of faith, we do this. As a community of faith, we do not do that. And Biba, you were right to say there's quite a lot in that reading, is there not? Of quite a lot of this, you've got to be kidding me, and not so much of that, which is the norm. But when it comes to facial features and physiological features that treat the heavenly parent, the heavenly father, is it a certain color or a certain gender that defines and shapes family of God? Some people in the past and even today still think that way, but I don't think it's that way. However, I think there is a defining feature or characteristic that defines and shapes sons and daughters of the living God. And it's in our scripture reading today. Did you catch it? Did you catch it? It's in our scripture reading today what that defining characteristic it is for those who are sons and daughters of the God Most High. Jesus begins his sermon here, and it, I never saw this before, but it's really funny to me. He says, for you, those of you who are listening, now you would think if Jesus were here today and preaching instead of me, everyone would be listening. Remember that old commercial from E.F. Hudden, when E.F. Hudden speaks, everyone listens? Certainly everyone would listen to Jesus. But Luke's telling us in the, in the lips of Jesus that back in Jesus' day, not everyone listened to Jesus. Maybe they thought, you know, what are we going to have for lunch later today? What are we going to, what are we going to, when is this guy going to stop talking kind of day? But he says, for those of you who are listening, for those of you who want to learn, listen to what I'm saying. Love your enemies. Do good to those that hate you. Bless those that curse you. Pray for those who treat you wrong. What? In Jesus' day, it wasn't like that. The norm was if you, you love your friends and family and you hate your enemies. You do good to those who do good to you and you do bad to those who do bad to you. You bless those that bless you, you curse those that curse you, you pray for those that pray for you, and you, disharm, you do harm to those that do harm to you. What is Jesus saying when he says you're to love and bless and do good and pray for people that do not do good to you? And he doesn't stop there. Did you notice? He says if someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn it off for the left cheek. Now this is probably not a fight, but this is probably an insult. When somebody insults you, don't insult them back. When somebody challenges you to a fight, don't fight them back. And then he says, treat others the way that you want them to treat you. 
And I'm not going to go through it all, but there's one other little part I do want to bring up. This next little part's important, I think. He goes on to say, what credit it is for you if you only love people that love you. Even sinners do that. And sinners here is not necessarily really bad people, but people who don't practice your faith. He's saying if you only love people that love you, you're, you're no better than people that aren't even religious. If you do good to only people that do good to you, sinners do that. You're no better than the non-religious. If you lend money expecting to get it back, the, the, the sinners do that too. You're no better than the sinners, the non-religious. What is Jesus trying to get at here? I think what Jesus is trying to get here is that, that his followers, if you're listening and want to do it, are not to be people who look at other people to determine how you're going to behave. That you do not go to other people and say, well, if you're going to be bad to me, I'm going to be bad to you. If you're going to be short with me, I'm going to be short with you. If you're going to be nasty to me, I'm going to be nasty back to you. He says, we're not to look to other people to define and shape how we live. Not only for enemies either, but also for friends. We're not to go to our friends and look to them to determine how we are supposed to live either. He says the one that we're supposed to look to to define and shape our life and relationships with other people is our Heavenly Father, who is merciful to all patient with all, kind to all, generous to all. This is the teaching here. This is the characteristic that says that, yeah, you are a son or a daughter of the Most High. We're, 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 we're made into disciples by the grace of God in the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. That's a free gift that we do not earn. Our place in the family of God, just like Albert did not earn his place in the Spade family, or in the family of God, it was a gift, it's what happened. However, how we're going to be in the family of God and how we're going to behave, although we need the Holy Spirit to help us, depends a lot on us. Are we going to be people who take our cues from what other people do to us to determine how we'll be with them? Or will we try to resist that temptation and become people who look to, who look to God and the God who comes to us in Jesus to define and shape? how we're going to be with other people. Mother Teresa has a wonderful, wonderful little poem here that I think fleshes out even more ways that we are to try and be God's people in the world. The examples Jesus gave is, in our reading today is not an exhaustive list, but it's a suggestive list to help water the pipe, so to speak, on how we are to be. Listen to some of these things, and maybe that will help even more. People are often unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Is that true? <laughs> Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some false friends and some true enemies. Succeed anyway. If you are honest and frank, people may cheat you. But be honest and frank anyway. If you spend years, what you spend years building might be destroyed by somebody overnight. Build anyway. If you, are, if you find serenity and happiness, there may be jealousy. Be happy anyway. The good you do today, people will often forget tomorrow. Do good anyway. Give the world your best. It may never be enough. Give the world, you best, give the, world the best you got anyway. And here's the last part, which I think is the key part. You see, in the final analysis, it's between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. And I think that's what Jesus is getting at. Can we be people who treat others not based upon the way they treat us, but the way God treats not only us, but all people? There's a few things, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that to little five-year-olds and eight-year-olds, young minors, but people in confirmation class, that's something to think about when you want to follow Jesus. Do you want to try and embody that kind of understanding in your life? It's not for people who are, 
who are beat down in their faith, are young in their faith, who are wounded in their faith. We would never ask somebody who's sick to, to do a day's work until they got better and healthy. This ethic that Jesus is calling us to is one that we're to voluntarily take on and own as we go into places. I want to talk a little bit about baptism here. Um, we did not do a dedication of a little baby where we dedicate the child to God in hopes one day they will become a follower of Jesus. We did a baptism. And in our baptism, we say that this person is a son of God by the grace of God. We say this person has the gift of the Holy Spirit. We say this person has talents and gifts that are latent in him that will come out to help him, but also they're to be used for the community of faith. Because when people of faith do not use their gifts and talents, there's diminishment in the community of faith. And Albert has a place in the community of faith. Unfortunately, Albert does not understand English yet. It's our job to try and tell him as he grows older, it's your job to tell him, it's your family's job to tell him to find his place. But you do not have to do it alone. You're already receiving on the cradle roll, right? Information from the church about how to relate even to young Albert with a, a sense of God's, a sense of safety and security that you're sending a message that this is a world Albert can trust. That's important work, very important work. You also are going to have um, Sunday school classes in a few years and youth group activities and the Christmas play here on Sunday morning. And, um, and Eloise is going to join you. <laughs> They'll probably do their first year together right here. And hopefully, hopefully in about 13 years, they'll come back. That both of them will come back and say, you know what my family and parents and community of faith said when I was baptized? I believe that too. I believe I'm a son of God. I believe I have the gift of the Spirit. I believe I have gifts and talents to share with the community as well as myself. And who knows, maybe those two will get married one day. <laughs> hey, it could happen. It could happen. We don't want to rush anything, though. You and I are called to a, 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 a tough road. Because the world says, treat other people the way that they've treated you. We've been taught that and ingrained that. But Jesus says, resist that. And when you do, your reward is great in heaven, and you will show that you really are a son and daughter of the God Most High. May God make that so for Albert. May God make that so for us. Amen. This time I invite you to join me in a spirit of prayer. O oh God, parent and father of us all, we offer our prayers for the human family. We pray for those who have given up praying for themselves because experience has made them cynical or wary of asking. For those who dislike what they have become but will not turn to you for forgiveness and renewal and for those who have made an uneasy truth with their conscience. Hear our prayer and strengthen us that we may strengthen others, particularly people in places in life like this. We pray for those who are weakened by selfishness and poisoned by resentment, for those who see everyone's hand against them, and for those who are intent on spoiling the peace of others. Lord, hear our prayer and make us instruments of your judgment but mainly your peace and your love. We pray for the disgruntled, the weak in mind, those who bury their gifts, the sick who have taken refuge in invalidism, and the bereaved who have lost the power to make new friends. Dear God, hear our prayer and make us instruments of renewal in their lives. We pray too for those who refuse to be discouraged by failure, for those who live in the midst of negative thought, pessimism, and hopelessness, and yet remain undaunted 
and live out the teaching that we heard here today. Lord, hear our prayer and enable us to join their ranks. Finally, we pray for ourselves that in the name and power of Christ, we may bring healing to the sick, hope to the defeated, and confidence to the disheartened. On this day, we pray for people on our hearts and places on our hearts, particularly in the Ukraine. We hope and pray that somehow violence might be avoided, and if it happens less than more, it's shorter than longer. And may those caught in the crossfires suffer, suffer less than they, than they have to. Help our leaders and leaders around the world find a better solution. We pray your healing hand to be upon people on our hearts this day. Particularly, we lift up Nora, Rhonda, Steve, Debbie and David, Sharon, Milan, Matt and Randy. Bless them be with Charlene, Larry, and Priscilla. And now I invite you out loud or silently to share who and what's on your heart this day. Dear God, we give thanks that you hear our prayers, whether they're silent, whether they're in English, or in the sounds of a little baby. For we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray to you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We will now continue our worship by receiving our morning tithes and offerings. Let us remember the words of Jesus that it is better to give than to receive.
who in Christ taught us how to be faithful, we respond to his instruction, seeking your favor. Be pleased with the offerings we give you. May our actions contribute to the well-being of others. Surprise the offender with our peaceful solutions and start the beggar by our willing response. For then we shall love neighbors as Christ taught us to do. In his holy name we pray. Amen.